Okay, so in video two, we're gonna continue from where we left off. We already made the back piece. We made the inner pocket, so let's put the labels for it. So we know this is, um, sorry, not 70, <laughs> one, uh, 110 on both directions and 70 across here. So we know that it's gonna be 70, then the space is going to be 1.5 millimeters, and then it's gonna be 70. If we wanna make another, just, just for the sake of helping us um, keep our bearings, uh, if we wanna make a separate note, which I typically would make notes of, I will just do this, cause I already, it's already embedded in our head. I'll just put one point, let's put, yeah, 1.5, millimeters that's what 15 millimeters sorry not 1.5 millimeters 15 millimeters so we know that the space in the center is going to be 15 millimeters and that'll just be a guide but it doesn't matter because if we take the two 70s and we put them to the ends the space in the middle is going to add up to 15 millimeters right now the interesting part the pockets so to make the pockets we're going to use this same uh piece here but not um that particular one I'm going to draw a line all the way across the page. And this is just for the sake of ease of uh, use. Notice this ruler has a metal edge, right? And I use that for cutting. So this is the side, the plastic side I would want to draw from. Plus it's also easier in terms of visibility. Uh, and I should put on my glasses because I thought it would inhibit my headphone or my headset, but it won't. So you'll see why we did this in a sec. Let me just put on my glasses. We're going to make sure that the line is true by measuring, uh, forgive me, by measuring um, the end. So this has to be exactly 110. Otherwise, it's not. So it's not exactly 110. It's just a millimeter off, but that's too much of a variation for what we want to do here. So I'm going to redraw that piece of the line. And just because we, we want some, some um, clarity, I'm gonna erase the inner line this time. When I say clarity, I mean uh, we're getting very specific with our measurements now, um, our drawing, sorry. Because here millimeters really matter. Okay, so the reason I did that is that you can imagine that the card, because remember, when you're putting a wallet together, you have to remember or you have to know the order that things go in. You can't put a wallet, let me take this out. You can't put a wallet together. Oh my gosh, the glove is right here. <laughs> yeah, this is the glove you'd want to buy if you want to cut stuff without cutting yourself. Um, so you want to, if you put your wallet together, the, there's an order to putting it, putting it together. You can't just do it um, willy-nilly and then, well, you can. You're just going to realize you'll have to start over, <laughs> basically. So for this, when you're putting it together, you're not going to just take this card piece here, sew it onto the back piece here, and then try to sew the card slots on. It doesn't work out. What you would have to do first is sew the the pocket cards first, mostly, uh, that's the order that I'll go in, then so on the front pockets, onto this separate piece that's not attached to anything yet, and you're only sewing the inner side. Then we're gonna put this onto the outer piece and stitch the whole thing, including the other half of the, uh, the other side of the card pocket and the bottom of the card pocket. So don't worry with all that because that's what we're going to do. I'm just showing you quickly that you have to think about the the way it's built when we're um, putting it together. Um, so let me show you the reason I did this. So we're going to imagine that this whole section here is a whole um, area, a uh, playground of this card pocket piece. We can put 70 here, we can put another 70 here and make two separate card pockets to work on. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's just... Uh, since we're saving this to cut this out, I'm going to come off a little bit. Let's average it. And I'm going to go from here to here. That's 70. Can I get another 70 out of this? I can barely get another 70 out of this. So if I'm going from the edge, 
I'm gonna go up here to this and now we should have theoretically um, maybe I should and I can measure this is just uh, just four millimeters All right again I'm sorry if you can't see too well but that's the um, camera setup for now for now so four millimeters off should take me from 70 lining up with this and then I can take 70 from the edge and it should give me lining up with this so if I draw the lines in we should have exact sizes and we can measure it it's 110 it's 70 oops forgot to draw this line and there we have it so we'll label this one um the inner piece inner piece inner piece inner piece inner piece inner piece, inner piece, piece, piece. thumbs up if you know where that's from <laughs> and uh yeah so this is what we're going to use as our templates for making the card part and the card parts are these how tall does a card piece need to be that is entirely up to you i'm not even kidding you can make it right so that only this much of a card shows you can make it so that this much of the card shows you could make it short and have most of the card showing it's entirely up to your your design process i looked at my for example my card here i would say i wanted to be able to see uh just the tops of the cards and make it easy enough to reach in and grab it so all those aspects about uh how it fits is does come into play because you have to make sure that it's n it's not enough for something to look good it has to work and it has to endure it has to last so it doesn't matter if it looks fantastic if it does not work well it's not going to be used it's no good if it works well and it looks good it and it doesn't last then it's <laughs> it was the point right that lowers the value of it overall it's going to destroy your uh your credibility um at least early on so you these are the things you have to factor and a lot of this comes with experience so do not be dis dissuaded if you don't get it the first second third fourth tenth 15th 20th time i can show you the amount of wallets i can show i have a bucket of wallets a barrel of wallets that i've made over the years where i have that can't be used because they, they just i thought they were good they weren't <laughs> right but then there are some that just defy logic um i like let me show you one yeah, this is a wallet <laughs> um, that I uh, I made for testing out gussets, which is what this flap is. Um, and I experimented with this kind of flap. Typically, I would tell you one time, this is a pro tip, you, you, do, you may not want to make a, a flap like this where it's stitched on from here. You probably want to uh, curl it so that it comes. Uh, let me show you. You probably want to curl it so that instead of it literally just being a coming down from here, you might want to make it loop over and stitch the loop here so that it folds over like this. That gives you a lot more flexibility when it has to open out and close if you put things in here like keys, uh, coins or whatever else you need to store. Um, I'm a huge fan of of um, pockets and wallets and there's I have a there's a it's not for everyone but there are people who like it and you know I love making those kinds of things so this one was a test this one is I'm um, using um, a type of leather called Botero and uh, this is goat skin on the inside here this is not real alligator this is actually something called croco or uh, full crocodile leather it's a crocodile embossed cow leather it's super strong it's actually stronger than crocodile leather and uh, in that sense it typically lasts longer especially if you take care of it um but it's 
not the same. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I took this on vacation with my wife. I uh, went to Tobago, which was Sister Island, and uh, we went to the beach. I went to get a haircut. Uh, she told me, go get a haircut. And I said, fine. I hadn't gone to a barber in years. I shave my own hair. <laughs> and um, I'm, yeah, story time, right? Now nah, it's finishing now. And we got the haircut, and then we went to the beach, which was like opposite the, the barber shop. And we spent about two or three hours in the water. And when we came out, I was like, grab my key, grab the car keys in the, um, sorry, I told her to grab the car keys and my uh, license in the in the bag that we left on the show. And she tells me that my license is not there. My wallet is not there. And I'm freaking out. We're freaking out until I realize it's in my pocket. It's been in my pocket for the whole two to three to four hour ocean uh, experience. And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm not upset because I was testing it. Uh, but... I re- when I got home, it was just soaked. When I got home, I re- left it on the table. By dinner time, by evening, it was dry, bone dry, and it looked exactly the way it looks right now. This I hadn't added since then. I haven't added any conditioners to it. I haven't made any um. And as you can see, it's dirty, but it's not dirty because of the seawater. It's dirty because I just didn't clean it. This is dust from my pockets, right? So. Look, I'll show you how to what to put on your stuff to keep it. But that's a testament that I can now tell people. You could go into the ocean with this. Right? But anyway, the pockets we want, we want to do are not going to be like this shape. So I already showed you the shape. While it's easiest to do it like this, because it's just a line, some people get a little freaked out when they see curvy stuff because they think, how are we going to match up the curvy stuff to do the tea pockets? And what do I mean by tea pockets? Maybe I can destroy one of my wallets to show you. Um, this is actually a Chinese made wallet I bought in a store. And you might ask why I did that. And the answer is don't ask why all the time. If you're going to ask why, ask why not. That's another thing that I often say. And I said I would mention it here. Because these are practically templates. <laughs> right? These are practically templates that you can dissect and see how they did it. This thing is made entirely of like polyester and nylon or something. So it's thin enough to have multiple pockets and uh, all these different things, but this is horribly ugly. But the techniques used are interesting. You can see they did a rolled edge here, right? Um, which is a really um, effective technique in leather craft. Uh, when you want to... You see, look, there's even faux leather on the inside, which doesn't make sense to me. If I was going to use this faux leather, I'd put it on the outside and put the polyester lining on the inside. But hey, <laughs> this whole thing is... Uh, yeah, th it's just a template. That's why. That's all. That's the reason I got it. Don't... If you see this thing for $2, pick it up. <laughs> right? Um, I was looking for a... a oh, I have one. And... By the way, this is super appropriate because this was actually um, one of the first examples of this that I was working on. And uh, this, yeah, this is my brand here. And uh, this is how we're going to make the wallet. We're going to do this part first. So the back piece first is going to get uh, stitched, have the pockets stitched onto them, but only on one side. So that when we add it to this, then when we stitch all the way around to connect the back piece to this, we also connect the pockets to everything else and it works out. So um, if you look on the inside, this pocket has a different shape. So the front pocket, branded, however you want to brand um, and whatnot, the inner pocket is shaped differently for a reason. And that reason is that you need to save as much space as possible inside these products because you don't want a product that's bulky before you put stuff in it, <laughs> much less after you, well, if you give your products ratings and people want to put a million and one things in it and outdo those ratings, that's on them, not on you. So you can guarantee your wallet can look a certain way and act a certain way and behave a certain way. It's only so much as, uh, they are willing to, to ab abide with you. So because the type of stitching we use is saddle stitching, what I'm showing you here is a perfect example of why we use saddle stitching. I could cut all this out and this thing still won't come off up to that point because saddle stitching stitches twice into the same hole 
to prevent it from unraveling like what will typically happen with a regular stitch or a machine stitch that just goes through once and uh, I'm taking this off yeah I just need to take this piece off here and we should be okay yeah so this is what we call a tea pocket and it's called a tea pocket because it kind of looks like a tea. The whole purpose is that you take this tea pocket, which is which was originally like this, right? It is the same size when you line it up, except that you cut pieces of it to slim down bulk. But not only do you cut the ends off to slim down bulk, what you also do is you thin it down so it's really thin compared to a standard pocket front or it could be the same as a pocket front if the pocket front is thin enough already but you tend to want to thin off the edges or skive down the edges because you don't need all that bulk the only areas that you might want to leave some meat on uh enough meat on um is at the top part where the card is going to interface because you don't want to have something that the front pocket looks a certain thickness and the second pocket is super thin and it just looks kind of odd that also makes it difficult to work an edge and make it look nice so this area you might want to leave um intact except for possibly the edges around here but don't worry we're going to do this on our card slot so you'll see how it's done and one mistake i'll mention it now but i'll mention it again that a lot of people make is this thin this down so so thin that there's hardly any meat and it, the, the, even the threading doesn't hold and by god's grace it lasts that's the only thing that keeps it there so we want to put a tea pocket inside of our um inside our inner piece however it's not this pocket this flat pocket remember the diagram right uh curved piece here which means that this top part you're seeing is the top of the tea pocket and then this part you're seeing is the front pocket and so you can imagine that inside there's going to be a t-shape v-shape or whatever you want to call it and the question is where does the bottom of the tea pocket start this piece here where does it start in the equation it can't start at the bottom right it can't start here because that's where the original piece <laughs> is going to start or the front piece these are the same size right and if i put this at the bottom this can't go behind and start at the bottom as well because it's going to hide it it's the same size so there's a difference in the height here right to be able to make up that second pocket right don't worry about this piece and that means that if we look under here there is a there is where it aligns is up from the base so when you put a card in the card is going to stop here and this is all up to you how much uh sorry well it's actually going to be on the outside here <laughs> i'm just doing this for the sake of demonstration because on the inside this is actually going to go down to the where this is stopping so that's how it'll look so this is the anatomy of a card pocket guys i'm sorry about the white on white but this is the anatomy of a card pocket right and the least because you're not seeing this this we can afford to sacrifice flesh from this is where we can afford to remove bulk from and that's how we see a space now again this so what we've been trying to do is figure out how tall our card pocket is going to be i'm looking at this and this is fine i like this i came up with that height in the beginning because that's where i i wanted the the card pocket to be so if we measure it this is measuring at 60 millimeters so we're gonna do 60 millimeters but i know you might be asking but tristan but tristan 
sorry about my chair guys but Tristan how are we gonna do 16 millimeters if uh, you know where we're gonna put 16 millimeters is it gonna be 16 millimeters up here is it gonna be 16 milli millimeters down here like you know because it's a curve right it's not a straight um, standard uh, line well you don't build it as or I don't build it like this first I actually uh, build it as a square first or uh, what you call a primitive a rectangle or what are straight lines first basically and then we deviate so i'm going to put the highest point here at 60 so that the curve will come down but now that we've extended the top a bit i'm actually thinking that will expose maybe about half the card how about we go up to about 70 uh, we're experimenting so we're gonna see how this co how, how this comes out right so this is all live experimenting and we also want to add some decorative inlay on the inside here which is not part of this original piece so we're leaving room for ourselves to work with is wise but i'll be very honest with you um typically uh miko would not want to do something like that in this particular setting um or rather this type of design but i'm doing it for the, the sake of demonstrating to you uh, as much as i can in a, I I without being coming too radical right so i want to teach you about using uh inlays using exotic um uh pieces to do inlays as well but if you don't have exotic you don't need to use exotic you can use anything to do inlays on layers or whatever it, however you want to decorate as well so i'm trying to maximize here so this is your product basically um so i decided to go with 70 millimeters this is going to take up most of the card think about it if this is 60 right and this is 70 then the front pocket is going to be this tall at least it's going to start off this tall which means that the card is going to be obscured all the way up to this point at least minus the part for the curve so we're not worrying about the curve for now we're just going to do these squares so if this is 70 going across here then that means that this is going to also be 70 meaning it's a square and we are working with a square i say that because that kind of makes things a little easier when we have to um i'm just measuring up here when we have to actually work on something like the curve because 101 drawing in school if you want to mirror something you just have to draw part of it and then fold it in half <laughs> and then you have copy the other half you know so but since we're not doing something symmetrical we're just gonna go with a simple design so for the curve i'm gonna freehand it um i remember what it looked like on the actual drawing but i'm not gonna go um too crazy with trying to get it exactly as the drawing what i will do and this is important is i want to ensure that i leave enough room on either side for a straight stitch to go up without a problem hear what i'm saying about this for a second you do not need to do that it doesn't matter what the shape is on either side um and let me see if i can explain that a little better um so what i mean by that is let's suppose we have this pocket piece here which is what we're working with right and uh, we want to create these um, T pocket. So let's suppose we created a line, um, a T pocket line. Sorry, regular. So this will be the front pocket, and therefore the T pocket would look something similar to this. Fair, right with me. Now suppose we decided we wanted to do some stitching. So let's put our um, T pocket. On the inside here so this is our second one by the way you can have as many tea pockets as you can fit right it's just a matter of making sure you have as little bulk as possible and as much room as possible um so that your cards don't stick inside and stick out the top of the, the wallet right but um we're just doing two in this particular uh particular one so if i wanted to stitch along these lines here i normally stitch to a one eighth of an inch um inside 
so from the edge i go one eighth inch and i draw my line and that's where i stitch right so that means i'll be stitching along this line here and that's fine that means with the t-pocket it's going to be stitching along here what happens if i did something different right and i decided i wanted to go like this so let's say this was the design and the t pocket you would might wonder how is that gonna look well if you draw the original line as a square right and you simply add the let's erase this for now you simply add the curve that you just made to that we just made here right then the t pocket is going to be exactly following this line this is going to be exactly like this so your new tea pocket will look <laughs> literally look like this right and when we stitch we will now stitch to this line which would be like this on our tea pocket. So it really doesn't matter what we do on one side or the other side or however we do it. But I will tell you this. When you're now getting into the the art of creating pockets and adding pockets and layering pockets and there are going to be a couple tips that I teach you when we actually do the pockets um, when we're working with the leather, you, you want to not complicate things really okay so for the sake of 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 um both maintaining the aesthetic i want to make which is the curves but also making it easy for you in the beginning to get accustomed to stitching along different pieces and layered pieces and lines i want to kind of make this end here straight for you so that you won't have to have too much extra thinking going on when you're now trying to learn and don't worry about how it looks here just know that what that means is this i'm gonna leave at least since i'm stitching one eighth in which is around here i'm gonna leave some space here so stick with me here i hope i haven't lost you just know this i added seven millimeters inside right just as a marker let me show you what i'm doing with that marker I'm gonna go ahead and do my curve, right? I'm gonna draw my curve freehand. So I want my curve just to uh, average it. I just want it to come down just to have a little flare. I don't want it to be too extravagant. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna level it off, right? So that's the curve we're gonna work with. If I did not level off here, I could have gone, for example, with my curve and continued going down. Or I could have come and gone up and made a, a nice little uptake in the end there. That's a nice way to do a curve. But I'm going to have to stitch along this line here. And I'm there. this is the, the point I'm making here. I don't want to create a complicated or more complicated stitch line than necessary. It's not that the stitching line is going to change. It's that when you're measuring with your stitching um, needle sorry your stitching iron when you're measuring where you're going to put your stitches it's easiest to start off with a f with a straight line going across so because i'm not doing a whole line and because i'm deviating by making this curve i am going to make sure that i have at least a certain amount of space here that is a straight line so that it'll be easier for you to work with when you're doing this along with me if i weren't gonna have to factor in your uh new mindset i would probably just do a uh an, an you know continue with an interesting curve but just to make things simpler it's all about simplicity that's what this is about right um i'm, I'm leveling off my curve right so i'm coming down with my curve down here and i'm gonna tilt it back this way and I'm going to level off my curve so that 
I'm gonna ensure that if I measure seven millimeters and seven millimeters was random. I I mean I just found that was a good length. Alright, so if I put seven millimeters here as a virtual line, that's not my stitch line guy by the way, guys. My stitch line is gonna be farther out here, closer to the edge, one eighth. But this is where I'm gonna make sure it is straight. Alright, and then whatever fanciness can happen on the inside. Alright, so let me just swap my pencil. So straight here up to seven millimeters and straight here up to seven millimeters and then we're gonna draw our curve so we're eyeballing this curve I could pull out my French curves I could pull out my uh, geometry pieces these work wonders depending on what you're trying to design get some of these I recommend they help when you're cutting leather um, corners and stuff like that um, yeah but this is the curve that we're going to use for well, yeah, for a pocket. <laughs> right? Now, here's the thing. Because we freehanded this thing, because we eyeballed this thing, um, it may be a little more difficult to, to eyeball uh, the second pocket curve, the second pocket, sorry, and get the same curve. Now, there are tools that you can use. This is one, right, that allows you to... Uh, copy an exact um what's the word uh curve or exact line and get your let me see I'll put this down here don't ask me what it's called i can't remember <laughs> right and get an exact copy of it so what you would do right is you would make the distance all right tighten it up to that distance which is going to be how you want to mirror the curve and i'm going to do this and i'm going to run it along the line of the original curve so i'm just tracing and my pencil above if it's tightened well is just going to mirror it so now i can uh spruce it up and make my curve that's one way you may not have this tool and you do not need to get this tool i just have it so there's another way you can do this easily now if we didn't eyeball it and why but what i mean by that is if we use a tool to actually create it where we have measurements um which is also probably an easy way to go about doing it in the beginning then you just have to use those same measurements like, to work out how the second curve is going to be I didn't do that. I eyeballed it. We can still we can still work with that. Why am I keep talking about the second curve and what is it? If you're lost, stop getting lost at this point here. So basically, what I'm saying is this: look at this, look at this example I had before. This is your original front pocket, and this is your T pocket. Your front pocket does not. Your T pocket does not have to mimic the exact shape as the front pocket but in our case it will so whatever we do to this this t pocket has to follow suit remember the ipad um example i gave just now so if the curve goes down here then this is gonna have to follow it so that this distance between the top and bottom here is, and the top on here is going to be the same Oh, you can't see that. The distance between the top and bottom here and the distance between the top and bottom here, right, is going to be the same whether we do a curve or not, right? So, we're looking at our front pocket here. What does our T pocket look like? Well, how about we go on this side here? This is why I drew a second one, right? How about we go on this side here and we say our T pocket will go, um, it will start off at, uh, you know, like, so this is the height where the other one starts on. So we can kind of like imitate this, I guess. But there's no science in this. I mean, there's no science in eyeballing it, but we want it to be an ex as, as close to the original as possible. So here's a really simple way to do this. And the method is by working backward. 
by designing your tea pocket first. So let's suppose this is no longer our front pocket. Let's suppose this is our tea pocket. All we're gonna do is build our tea pocket and from there we have a front pocket design. We just need to figure out how tall our tea pocket piece here is. And for the sake of another tip that I would like to show you when we're doing it, I'm gonna add some extra all right on the height here so that we'll be able to let me not confuse you let me leave that until that point so one thing you don't want to do is or one thing you should probably try to avoid let me put it like that is making your tea pocket start exactly where the front pocket ends you don't really want to do that because you see that space that space becomes visible unless your stitching is so precise and that it locks it in. But you don't have to worry about that. There's ways to get around this and I'll show you uh, one of the easiest ways. So for that to happen, you need to have some meat. So it's gonna overlap a little bit, you understand? Um, what I'm gonna do here is say, this should be, I think one millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is just about one millimeter. So because we're making taller pockets, I wanna put about one, and a half millimeters. That's gonna give me enough for overlap as well. So I'm gonna put one and a half millimeters. And because we've two because we're now using this as if it's our front pocket, we're gonna measure it down. So one and a half millimeters. Alright. Remember I left a little space here and a little space here to be straight before the curve starts right so all I'm gonna do is make sure I draw a straight line for up to that distance which is 1.7 sorry 0.7 centimeters so I know that I draw a line here so I know that's where it is here I'm eyeballing the line so this is where our pocket goes this is the beginning of our tea pocket and because it's our tea pocket remember all of this is going to be hidden so i don't need to draw the the uh, the the anything else here except the inner part so let's go ahead and do that to do that i'm going to use my center rule now i know it may seem a bit disjointed the way i'm explaining it and that's because as i said i've not done this while teaching it while filming it at the same time before. This is like a first for me doing this and I'm trying to keep the, the stuff cohesive, but I just know one thing, I will wrap it up, right? As we go along. So I'm gonna, I'm cognizant of the fact that you may be lost a little bit, but don't worry, I'm pulling it all together, okay? So um, what am I trying to find the center of? This little section here. Right, so I know that this is where I marked it off. This is 70, 70. So I'm gonna put my zero anywhere randomly around the middle area, and then I'm gonna count how much space is on the each side of the zero. So if I say one inch is this far, one inch is this far, then I'm gonna try to balance it out a little bit. Right, uh, yeah, here we go. This is our lines here. So I'm gonna try to balance it out a little bit. So we have one inch, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. One inch, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. So at 1.3 inch, it's touching the line on this side. And on this side, at 1.3 inches, it's just short of it. So I just have to shift it a smidgen across and we have average for zero. So this should be the center, average center, of this piece that we're working with here. And now I'm gonna keep the ruler here because my T pocket is just gonna be one inch. In fact, we can make it one, we can make it uh, point, uh, 1.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5 on one side and 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 on the other side. So this will be the bottom of our T pocket here, right? And it's even sides from here so to 
figure out that distance, I, all I have to do is measure it. So in millimeters, it's going to come up as an odd number because we use inches. But it doesn't matter. I can say, I can even round it off to millimeters, but it doesn't matter. Um, let's round it off to millimeters. So let's put it at three millimeters. Sorry, three centimeters or 30 millimeters. So this is where it'll be. So we can say uh, 30. And the reason I'm writing it on the inside is because when I cut this off, this would be left on the outside here and thrown away. So the measurements, I know it looks confusing, but so in fact, let's clean it up a little bit for the sake of being. So we know that this space and this space is uh, 30, right? And uh, we know that this space is uh, 7. And this space is 7. These little lines. So we know what our um, measurements are. All we do is draw a line from here because we know the height here is, and let's draw it sideways, 1.5. And that's going to be the same here. So we don't have to draw it twice. I'm going to take the point here and the point here and draw a line. I'm going to take the point here and the point here, draw our line, and we have our T pocket right here. Right, so let me darken it up with my pencil so we can clearly see what our T pocket looks like. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is the design stage which means this is where we experiment. So if we cut this out and trace this onto leather, you might say, well, okay, we did that, but now we, but we didn't. So you might be thinking, now we're gonna do the front pocket that has the same shape, except it's gonna be a full square, right? So why are we gonna do it twice? If you understand what I mean, <laughs> right? So I'll show you uh, how to make use of this one piece right by and, and 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 save yourself a lot of time now i'm torn i'm torn because that's a kind of a shortcut but i don't know if a shortcut is the best thing for you right now okay here's what i'll do i'll do the shortcut because it'll it'll maximize what i can teach you but here's what i will also do i'll show you the proper way without actually showing you what, you have, what I would typically now do is cut this out and then take it and put it here and then trace it. And the only reason I'm doing that is because while I could build this from scratch perfectly using the measurements I have, because these are just straight lines, right, up to this point, the curve is a natural a naturally occurring curve that has no predefined measurements. I eyeball that curve, but that curve has to remain consistent when I trace it uh, to another piece or when I'm doing the other, the front pocket. So all I have to do is cut it out and then put it on the paper here and then trace it over and I have an exact copy of the curve. And that's it. So I could have two pieces. The, this, which would be a full square up to this point and then the curve. And that'll be my front pocket. And then I can cut this out and this will be my T pocket. I don't have to do that because with the T pocket drawn out, now you will be able to see how we can utilize it and save well, time and also, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's, so that's all the parts. That's all the parts we needed. We needed the front pocket. We have a front pocket here, we have the T pocket, we have the side, the inner pockets, right? And we have the back. The only thing we're missing is the decorative piece on the inside. And we don't yet know what that's gonna be like. Um, I'm gonna do an abstract piece and then reach you, but I'm not gonna do that here. This is to get the, remain, the main template out. So, at this point, I'm gonna cut it out now give you my little tips on cutting it out and then we'll end this video and we'll start the next video from when we actually pick the leather and begin to cut the leather and then begin to build the piece
okay so in cutting leather my cutting the paper sounds easy and it is just keep a couple things in mind now what knife do you use to cut it's entirely up to you personally i love using empty cutters like these um they come in all different brands sizes shapes whatever as long as you know what kind of blade you're going to get this is uh 30 sorry this is a 70 degree blade i believe uh this is the angle you're looking at i don't like to use these because i find a 90 uh, sorry a 30 degree blade like this gives me more room to see what i'm cutting because it's thinner down at the bottom here just know that that's what i like and i've found that most leather crafters tend to uh you know yeah um some use these rotary cutters i use rotary cutters but not for this um you would find a lot of leather crafters using these utility knives right and they use just your standard uh y uh two-sided utility blade which is uh perfectly fine all of these methods are fine whatever you are comfortable with is what we're getting at here that's all it is this is this <laughs> right um always change them when you're gonna cut some fresh leather um or do some fresh cutting on paper or something to that effect but you see cutting these or replacing these as often is a little more of a hassle than replacing the nt cutter blades because all you do is snap off the edges and i always snap off before i start working i'll put this together later so my tool of choice for cutting paper um and by the way if you're spending too long trying to figure that out you're doing it wrong <laughs> right so my tool of choice for cutting paper and i like to designate this is me this is my personal thing i like to designate certain tools for certain things so i don't have a blade that i use to cut everything that's not me that could be you and it probably should be it could if it works out well then don't reinvent the wheel so this is my paper cutting blade um i have to factor some things in i'm left-handed so when i buy blades i and and that have different sheaths i have to know that they're gonna f work for me otherwise it's just gonna be a pain when i have to cut when i'm using blades that aren't uh like these or replaceable another popular um, thing is these zacto blades a lot of people use these they have a very shallow profile as well right um could be the same 30 degrees but i don't like zacto blades i find that they they get dull too quickly and replacing them is not as easy as snapping off an end um this example is one that i use sometimes to cut certain leathers um just i have a, have you will get familiar with many i've probably done episode on blades <laughs> okay uh that'll take too long here but for now i'm just gonna cut off this piece so all i do is carry it up to the first bar um, the back of the the knife normally has one of these slots that you stick it into and then you I like to close my eyes when I do this or turn my head Because of that But if you're using a pliers or something you can just snap it and grab it But I still don't take a chance and I always have my glasses on um, Get a small container or something with a little, little slit not a big one like this, but a little slit so that it won't fall back out and then you just put your blades in there so when you throw it away you can just tape it through the bin and nothing gets damaged no one gets hurt all right and yeah um i have many of these types of knives um so cutting out your pieces while i said i use this typically i'm not using this because as I said, I use that for leather. The one I use for paper is this one, which has a metal edge for cutting. And here's a tip that I like to give. And this is where I like to show um, the little things that a lot of people may not think about. When you're cutting out something, cut away from your work. And what I mean by cut away from your work is, so I would probably try to separate each piece by using a scissors and cut it out and then cut the exact line but i'm gonna be brave here and show you if you couldn't do it for some reason you had to cut all from the same piece this is how i would cut it i am not gonna do this 
and cut like this why if i'm cutting and i'm going fine here and then all of a sudden i deviate for example or i cut into it i already just cut into my template i don't want to do that if i make a mistake let it happen on the outside so as a left hander i have to turn it like this then i'd have to line it up now a shadow can form on this side here because of the light I have pointing over on that side. So if I took that light off, light from this side would come in and illuminate the area I need to cut. But I don't have that problem. With the other one, when I raise up the flap, yes, it does cause a problem often I have to turn off that side light. But I'm just gonna line it up here, right? I'm keeping my ruler sturdy. My elbow, I can't show you this here, but my elbow is locked. So, I'm not bending my elbow like this. My elbow is locked. And what I'm doing is I'm going to just drag my arm backward. That's going to help me keep a, a consistent line going back this way. And it's going to help me make straight cuts even without a ruler. So without a ruler, I can cut all of this out. And it's not to show off. I'm telling you that you will be able to do this, right? Um, and you should be able to practice it just in case you don't have a ruler. So you might see people cutting really close down here or holding the knife like this or holding the knife like this. It does not matter what you are comfortable with, what works well with you, what gives you the most control. That's what you do. <laughs> okay, guys, so don't cut exactly like me unless you need to. One thing me I don't like to do is have too much blade out either. So just now it was like this, I'm gonna put it like this because the blade actually flexes. So the less you have out, the less it's gonna flex. And I'm gonna come and I'm just gonna do a light cut because the blade is sharp because it's fresh and pressing hard Im increases your chances of, you know. So it's already cut. Now I cut away from my work. So when I go to cut this, I'm just gonna turn it like this. And I made sure to cut past my point so that I don't have to line up an exact dot to get a corner. I'm gonna start again. And I'm just gonna come back slowly and very gently. And now we have our template that's it <laughs> right so that's one and now i have to orient how am i gonna cut all of this this is just gonna get in the way so i'm gonna cut this off right and i don't need this bottom piece but uh, yeah let's just get rid of this bottom piece and we're gonna work with this here so first thing i want to cut out is this piece which is the inner piece all right make sure i have the right side <laughs> with the metal because i don't want to cut into my plastic ruler and i'm going to cut the whole piece and take your time you don't have to rush don't there are people who can there i contribute on on on, uh, on forums and i contribute on reddit and i remember a guy um put a picture of a, a wallet he built and he just started leathercraft and he said he put the picture and the wallet was very a very rudimentary wallet but it it was a good effort for for uh and not his first try but uh, you know amongst his first tries but the comment is what got me he said hey Look at that, I, look guys, look what I built. I, I built this in an, uh, in an hour. My only question to him was, why is it important that you built it in an hour? Or why did you choose to try to build it within an hour? I can build a wallet in an hour. I would not build a wallet in an hour. Why am I going to take that extra risk of making a mistake or being um, untidy about something just for the sake of saying I did it in an hour? It doesn't make sense, right? So... Unless your customer is literally banging on your door, <laughs> right? Um, take your time, <laughs> even with something like this. So, I'm gonna cut out the other piece. So 
something else to factor in. I don't typically like drawing um, thick lines because where does the measurement start? In the middle of the thick line? At the end of the thick line? You know, it, it seems like something trivial, but it's something you begin to start paying attention to when you have to get precise. But here, I'm not too overly concerned, especially when we go to digitize it. I'm going to make... I'm going to draw it with lines that are super thin so that you don't have too much flexibility. So this is the inner pocket, the inner piece, All right? You can see there's a bit of a discrepancy here. That's okay. How, why? Because all we'll do is measure the, both of them. So we measure this one and this one is exactly 110. That's what I want, right? And this one, I'll get accustomed to the camera eventually, right? And at the end here, it's also 110, so I'm safe. I know this is the right height, which means this one isn't. This one is 110.1. So I know that I need to cut this down a length of just 0.1. And that's how we fix the discrepancy, all right? For the card pocket, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw. Look at so this is how I, I like to cut the 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 um the curve out, because the curve is 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 nondescript. I'm going to have to draw cut. I can use a ruler to make the straight line here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my hands very slowly to make the straight line. It's a short thing, right? And I'm also going to use my hands to do the straight line down here and cut all the way off the drawing, right? So I can actually start from out here. So now I can get a little creative with my flow, taking my time. And that's it. Now, I did a deep cut. That's because I have some level of confidence. I, if you're not that confident, don't do, don't go for the the the. You're gonna see so many videos of people cutting leather and cutting templates, and you're gonna see them doing these cuts like, oh my gosh, like so quickly and so fast, and it's impressive to watch, and it's what they are accustomed to. I used to think that was something I had to achieve eventually but it's not you don't ever have to be able to do that if you need to use rulers use rulers if you need to go slowly go slowly don't worry don't worry about what everyone else is doing in that sense as long as you understand the fundamental reason behind it after that you can get creative and do it how you wish so what i drew this curve to demonstrate that if i did not do a curve a especially if this was thicker especially if this was thicker what I would typically do is what you call a channel cut, where I lightly scribe it, so it's not cutting all the way through. This gives me an impeccable amount of control, and if I make a mistake, it's not going to be a permanent one because it doesn't cut all the way through, so I can still fix it. Now, if you look at the back, there's a little bit of a groove, but it's nothing much. The channel is going to help me in the second pass where I don't have to press hard still. And as long as I follow the channel, again, the channel is going to try to hug my knife. And as it, it does that, then the cut becomes the cut. So for this part, I am going to use a ruler. Regardless of what anyone thinks about me and having to use a ruler or choosing to use a ruler for this short piece, I'm going to use a ruler. If I had much more to cut, I'd probably change my blade. Cut, um, use another one because I can actually look at it and see that it's starting to get worn. Because we're just using the tip and we're cutting through this mat at the bottom too. That's why. And am I going to do this? Uh, here we go. So, first of my deliberate almost mistakes. I do these things. That's how I like to teach. I like to start as if I'm going to do something that I shouldn't do and then wait for the student to be like, Sir, what are you doing? And then I, but we're not interactive here. So 
I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be cutting into my work. So I need to cut away from my work. So I'm going to turn it upside down for me as a left-hander. And I'm going to cut my piece here. All right. Now, we can cut the two pieces for the bottom parts of the T slot. So I'm just going to eye, eyeball this part and average it. Because it's a really short piece. And I probably not have any problems there. Cutting away from my work again. I'm going to cut this inside piece. But, no I'm not. <laughs> remember I said I want to cut this as a one piece that we're going to be used to, to template both the front pocket and the uh, I the inner pocket the T pocket so instead of cutting out the T pocket and then being left with just the T pocket which still wouldn't be too much of an issue to work with it's easier just to do it like this first I'm going to cut the square of it out see make sure that I'm cutting away from my work is on the inside I'm cutting away all right so my ruler protects my work and to cut away from my work again and the final piece is to cut away from here and now we have our front and T pocket template in one how does it how do you use this well we'll do it when in the next video but just to give you a quick preview what we'll do is say this is our leather we'll do this and we're gonna use a scratch all to uh, trace it uh, I use this anyway. We will just scratch all to trace it, and we would trace this, and then we would trace. So let's suppose we're using. Let's use a pencil because you won't see it if I use this. See, this is our all. This is our leather. We will put our pocket down. We will trace the the the, uh, the front pocket. Of course, we'll do it more carefully, but for now, we're just going to do this, right? that's our front pocket and then we cut that out and then when we're doing our T pocket we find another piece of leather and we do the same thing we're going to do the whole thing but this time we're going to take that slot we made and we're just going to do that And while we're holding it, we're just going to put a mark with the all right here. The good thing with an all too is that what you can do is you can puncture this spot. Let's put a little hole right there. Yes, I'm hitting my template and I want to do that. So it'll be easier the next time I have to work on and this is our template for our tea pocket. So what we do at this point is we would just draw, um, use the oil to scratch in our lines, and then we'll use the oil to join up our pieces, right? And that's our tea pocket. made out of leather right <laughs> so we just cut this and we have our front pocket and our T pocket together so this is all we need when we need to do the opposite side we just have to flip it over 
right? And because we punctured it, we don't even need to see the lines. We just need to know that we could stick our all in there and make those one here, one here, one here, one here. And we're good. So, uh, this has been a long video, um, but I wanted I want to power through this whole thing. But honestly, I I I I, I can't record and um, do all of that now. I need to stop the recording and take a break from that. But I'm gonna try to set my camera up a little better, a little closer down. Uh, we we get into the fun part of choosing the leather and talking about why we're gonna dye some leather, and I'm gonna show you the um, the choices we're gonna make. I would love if you guys would let me know what you think so far. Tell me what you want me to work on, how to improve. I can't do too much with my recording setup and stuff, but tell me what you recommend and what you think. If it's you know easy enough to follow as you go through, and just give me that idea. If we if we can do that and we get through it, then uh, hopefully you would have a a wonderful product at the end of this and some experience to take away from it. But anyway, let me end the video here. And uh, see you in the next one. Take care.